So what are you guys are what are you guys doing going forward? Are you gonna continue to look for same area, similar type stuff? Are you changing things up at all? What's what's in the cards for you guys for the next couple of years? Yeah, so something I kinda wanted to ask you guys, if you guys were in my seat, it had X amount of units that I have, you know, what, what would you guys what would be the next steps you guys would take? You know, traditionally I would love to get one of those SBA loans that's not recourse, yep. better terms, interest only, the longest amortization period you can get, thirty years. What would you guys do if you were me? That's a good question. Yeah. So I think that I tell people all the time, opportunistically, and I was going to ask this question, you propose it this way. I know you've guys refi your properties, you pulled out a lot of money. Now, opportunistically, I don't know if the option's there, but I don't know if you'd ever consider it. But one thing that I would consider if the profit margin and the money was there would be to potentially look for, you know, a small balance loan, you know, maybe 50, 100 units or something bigger. If you found that, I would love to know what the portfolio was worth. And it's just you and John, maybe a couple of investors. But if that thing was worth a certain amount of money that you can sell and get into a bigger deal, I would think about it in some way, shape, or form. I don't know if it's possible. Because it's harder to package them together and find the right person. Yeah. But don't load one at a time. Yeah. So, but if you were able to, right, if you spoke to a good broker and said, you know, here's a really good cash flowing asset at a 10 cap or an 8 cap or a 12 cap. You know, if you guys are all in at 10 caps and the value of that portfolio is at an 8 cap, you're going to have great upside for doing what you did. You could sell 19 units at, you know, $80,000 a door, $50,000 a door, and you paid $20,000, you are going to have a huge amount of money. You could roll into a nice 50 unit, 100 unit, 120 unit, whatever it is, yeah. where it's achievable. Now you got to find a market, a location. You got to be able to put all that together, but then you're going to be able to take your 19 units over six properties or three properties, whatever it is, and you're going to be able to put it on one piece of property. That's something that I would look to do and or leverage your experience. You know, that would be my plan one. You know, plan A, plan B would be leverage my experience and then maybe go look for, you know, a 50, 100 unit. And then plan C is it ain't broke, don't fix it. Continue doing so what you're doing. I'm different <laughs> than you. I always think that it's not smart to sell everything you have that's working well to roll into one property. That's true. Because if you fuck up, you had something good yep. that you've now fucked up. Yep. I'm more of the mind of maybe can you get to you know, sell half to get to a 30 unit mm -hmm. if it was a 50 unit or yep. sell two thirds. So that way at least you have some of that, but then you're scaling up or can you go another two to five years, build up more then sell off the original link? You know what I mean? Like I just yeah. think moving into one property in a different area when you have something that's going, what sounds to be very good or relatively good, you know, do you really want to take that risk to put it all into one basket and that basket doesn't do as well? So the other thing to look at 19 units, it's probably got good value. It's probably worth the, the debt, probably over a million bucks, right? Or on all four. Uh, no, close, well, well under a million. Oh, really? Yeah, um, I mean, I can tell you aggregate, you know, what is it? It's you know, 101 deal, buck 38 on another deal. It's, it's it's lower. Okay, because I was gonna say, because you could probably wrap that 19 unit up into one loan. Mm -hmm. and cross collateralize it and get maybe a 700,000. I don't know what the value is, but they're owned in different entities. So I, I just feel like, well, is it the same principal borrowers in all of them? It's as far as equity structure. Yeah. yeah me and John are all 50, 50 equity. That's our yeah. Structure. So you could probably yeah. take all those, roll it into like a fund yeah, esque structure. Assets. It could be owned in different entities. Let's say you put like Sorry. Lance and John LLC. It owns these deals. That's the new borrower. You cross collateralize all the properties. You may be able to get a non-recourse option, a better option. It, it may be available. I, yeah. I don't know enough about the deals, but that's something else you could look at. Because I agree. You know, listen, in a perfect world, if I own all my deals 50-50, me and whoever, I wouldn't sell a thing. Yeah. Unless I had a ridiculous upside. Because you're owning deals, you have the, they're cash flow and they're working. They're cash flow. So there's deals, yeah. no reason to sell them unless you get some guy that wants to come in and just buy. Yeah. You know, buy them. But you know, me, I would never sell anything. If I had the opportunity and the ability to just hold it forever, pending I've, I know what the capital is going to be to fix it and the ongoing stuff, but I would hold it. I would, you know, uh, you know I tell, you know, what I'm doing right now is I'm building up as much cash as possible to buy the, the very best deal, not deals. You know, I want to yeah. buy the yeah, best one deals. deal. Quality is better than quantity every day of the week when it comes to real estate, because yeah. I'd rather put 500 grand into a deal that's going to make 6% no headache then a hundred grand into a 25 cap. That's going to be, you know, I'm going to bang my head against the wall every single yeah, day. Yeah. So let, let me ask you a follow -up. Let me rephrase that question. Would you buy two options? Would you buy one? If you were me, would you buy a $1.5 million deal, raise a couple hundred thousand dollars, promissory notes at, at a certain rate, keep the equity or 
uh, team up with a syndicator and bring equity to the table, find a new deal in another market and establish yourself that way. Given my, given my work experience, what route would you guys go? I would, I would go the other route actually and see if you can find a few people and raise money to partner with yourself if you have money. Yeah. Because you are, you've built up 19 units worth of credibility. That's not, not, you need a track record. Yeah. But that's, 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 that's not insignificant. I don't know that like, if you're saying like coming to us and being like, Hey Toro, you know, I want to partner up with you guys. I think you can actually find, you know, five to 20 people that would be willing to invest alongside you guys on your next deal where you're, you know, you and John are 30% of the equity or something like that. And you guys can go buy a 20 or 30 unit in a similar type market. I don't necessarily think you need to partner up. I think doing promissory notes and keeping the equity puts more risk on you guys. Cause you've got to now hit those promissory notes. You're going to feel more indebted. debt to cover. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, you know, in my opinion, I think that's going to create more stress, Depend, anxiety. Depending and, if those promissory notes are at one or 2%. Of course. Right? <laughs> well, they're not. I'm, no, no one's yeah, I, I think you're better off in my opinion. I think you're always better off finding a partner that's going to share on the upside and the downside than getting a promissory note. Mm-hmm. Unless that promissory note is going to be your debt. Yeah, it's leverage. I yeah. mean, it, it, it's like you said before, right? If, let's say you and John together have 200 grand. You guys can go buy two more duplexes for 100 grand a pop. Or, but well, maybe more with a little bit of bank debt. But if yeah. you have 200 grand and you can do 70 30 splits with investors, you can go buy two 20 unit deals. But does it make sense to syndicate those smaller deals to support the admin and the overhead and all the fees with the lawyer and everything? Does it? I think we're less than the bigger deals. I think where it makes sense for you guys is you get to invest in those deals without needing as much of your Correct. capital. You're going to get the So benefit. I think, yes, some of the work is going to offset the money you might make on the other investors. But what it's going to do for you guys is one, it's going to get your foot in the door on smaller multifamily. It's going to build up a track record with investors. Mm-hmm. And it's also going to allow your money to go further. Mm-hmm. So instead of being able to buy a couple of duplexes or whatever it is, now you're going to be able to buy 40 units. You're still going to have control. So it's not like you're taking, let's say that 200 grand, for example, and investing with us where you give up control. You have the control. You get the benefit of the bigger deals. You get the benefit of getting some extra money in your pocket, but probably gets offset. And you're starting to build that track record, getting a non-recourse debt, which is a big difference as yeah, well. Just, even just the non-recourse debt alone. If you did, the terms are better. You can buy, you know. Yeah, I mean, even if you just bought... 220 units, let's say, for example, just the benefit of getting the non-recourse debt, in my opinion, I think outweighs everything. I, I also think one thing that, you know, th- they're going to be deals that become more upside driven for you guys to make money. So the day to day, it's not going to make sense to do it. But that 20 unit space in the market, similar to where you guys are buying, you could probably find a seller that has no idea yeah. what he has and not billing back water or that's not sub metered. If you found that deal and you put in 80% equity raise, 20% your equity and go back 80% bank debt, that deal you're going to buy, let's say you bought it at, a, at an eight cap, you're going to, you're going to drive value. You're going to buy billing back water by doing very minimal things that you guys are doing in the you're background surprised. of both of you. You're going to be able to get that to the finish line and flip out of it in a year or 12 or, or 24 months. And you're going to put, that's where you're going to make your money. But I think that 20 unit space, you're going to have so many more opportunities. And if you came to me and said, Hey, I got a million bucks, right? Th- that million bucks is going to generate you nothing until the back end. And it's not going to be nearly as good as if you went in and bought four 20 units. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I would do. I would look to leverage yeah. your experiences and what you're doing on maybe an unsophisticated owner, you know, an older guy that sold you seven condos, it's 85, you know, whether you got market price or not is irrelevant. But if you found that guy on an 80 unit in Pennsylvania or wherever it is, there's got to be untapped value in that that I'm sure nobody knows about. And I think if you can show people a, you know, a small deck of what your properties have done already and the value you've been able to generate and create for yourselves, I think a ton of people would be happy to invest alongside you Absolutely. Guys. Yeah. Especially in a market you're doing and in similar properties. Yeah. I think that's a great value prop for people. So I would encourage you to look more that route and Agreed. you know, start having those conversations with people, see what people are interested in. Yeah, that's good advice. Yeah. You know, as an investor, you're always trying to refine your path and, and figure out yeah, the best exactly. exact way to go and, and leverage off people that have more experience like like you guys and try to use that to, uh, you know, and the, o- the, right the other thing too is if let's say you get five, six, seven people to invest you do the deal, you may very quickly realize you hate 
dealing with investors exactly. and you, you decide to never do another deal with an investor again. Yeah. It'll be a way for you to test those waters as well for yourself yeah, personally. Relations is or it could be you find out, hey, I really don't mind and I love being able to spread my money out across multiple deals. Yeah. It's totally worth it. And now you can start being, you know, a small syndication model or whatever yeah. it is. I that's that's sure. also another thing for you guys personally of, hey, let's let's figure this out. Mm-hmm. But I think it's definitely something you, that my next step, I agree 100%, you know, go after a small 20, 30 unit syndication, see how much money you guys can raise. I put it to bed. I think it's a, it's definitely something you guys should try because because you'll make money if you find the right deal. Hundred percent. And the SBA loan is, is probably key for a deal. Like absolutely. That. Small balance. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely.